bsubeers.com here with Brian Leonhart, uh, senior tight end for the BSU football team. Uh, Brian, just uh, here to talk about your career here at Bemidji State. Um, why don't we start from the beginning? Uh, why BSU? I chose BSU mainly because I like the area. It's kind of I'm from the cities, so I kind of wanted to get out of the whole city life. And you know, this is kind of the cabin area, the lakes, you know, the life, the learning kind of thing. So that definitely was a big selling point for me. And another one of the biggest reasons was it was, it was the only place that let me do both football and track. Talk a little bit about uh, track. Uh, you're uh, getting offers from uh, Minnesota. Um, I know that. Uh, talk a little bit about that process, uh, being recruited by the you know the local D1 um, athletics and uh, maybe some of their offers you had. Well, uh, track was I would say was my best sport coming out of high school. I did have some looks from Division One schools, a couple of them. And uh, mainly the biggest thing was is I couldn't give up football, you know. It was, and then uh, I really had the opportunity to do both at you know Division two level, and I chose that. So, uh, talk a little bit about uh, recruiting process when you're trying to to play both. Um, did you have many options, or, or was was BSU standing out a little bit? It stood out. I did have options. I actually did get recruited for all three sports that uh, that I came out of high school playing. So it was, it was actually kind of kind of different going, because I remember going on to St. Cloud, I visited St. Cloud for football and meeting their wrestling coach, and then their wrestling coach called me the next week, was like, oh, we want you to wrestle here, then their track coach called me, but St. Cloud just wasn't really a fit for me, just being that, um, you know, they wouldn't let me, they wouldn't, fly out wouldn't let me do track. So I, that's what really what gave BSU that edge, and, and prior to even, even sports, you know, that before sports and everything, BSU was kind of an, an area that I could see me going to academically. Well, you choose uh, BSU and uh, redshirt that first year. How uh, hard was that to redshirt your first year when you're coming off, like you're talking about, a, a very regimented three-season, uh, three-sport athlete? Um, it it was different. It was really different not having that. I think that's like the I think that's the biggest difference coming from high school to college being that red shirt you're not playing on the Friday Friday night you know you're not playing at all really but it's it's how you take it you just gotta you just gotta realize that each one of those practices is like a game your scalpels are your games and you know you just you take the little things that you enjoy about practice and you know you consider them a win in your column you know and I, I just remember I remember because I, I always get asked this question and what it's like being a red shirt when I do the captain talks with uh with recruits and they always ask you know what's it like being a red shirt is it is it weird not not getting to play and it is and I remember it the one joy I got out of it I always played I played against Jake Anderson who was an all-american outside linebacker and me and him battled heads every day and I usually got beat pretty much always got beat but there was one play where I I, I beat him I beat him pretty good and that was that one play that I still remember to this day I can't think of many plays, even even playing in games, that I remember as vividly as that my red shirt year, and that you know that was the that was that state championship win, I guess you could say. You know that you know that's what kept me going as a red shirt, is just getting those those little wins each day. So you uh, make it through that red shirt year, and um, pretty much inserted right into uh, the lineup for BSU at tight end, a spot that. By the sounds of it, historically wasn't you know a big uh, marquee spot, but uh, all of a sudden, first game, uh, you score a touchdown, and uh, throughout the season, you have seven scores. Kind of talk about that that first initial game uh, as a collegiate athlete, and then your uh, first season. Well, I guess that all starts in the spring, because they kind of told me that they were going to start implementing me as a tight end, and that winter and that spring, it, it I got the whole playbook thrown at me. So when I first came in, they had me playing fullback, and it was a position I had no clue what I was doing at all. And then they'd throw this tight end playbook at me, which was all relatively new because they didn't have a tight end the year prior. So I remember Derek at home was a starting quarterback, and we'd have passing sessions. And I came from a high school. I didn't run very many routes. I didn't know what a corner was. I didn't know hardly know what an out was. I never ran it. The only, the only play I knew was go up the seam. And so those first couple of weeks of them just – I remember them giving me a sheet of all the plays, and I'd just sit there in class just staring at it, trying to figure it out. And I couldn't figure it out, and I just remember Derek being so frustrated with me, 
not understanding the plays and everything. And then it goes goes into spring where I'm just getting stuff thrown at me, and I'm the only tight end. I'm playing every single rep, and I'm just getting broken down, and coaches are just on me constantly. And it was it was a rough time. It was it was a struggle getting through that spring, but it really all paid off. You know, I started getting into the system more, understanding everything. And that summer was a big stepping stone too. You know, just getting stronger physically, and you know, learning the plays. And then coming into that first game, you know, just with all that confidence, you know, being with those 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 first team guys throughout the spring and the winter and stuff, and it just it worked out, I guess. Does it? Uh, do you have those feelings after that first game, or maybe you know when you get that first touchdown, do you do you sort of think like, okay, this was worth it? Yeah, I yeah, I would definitely would say that. I mean, all of it, I would say, I mean. It's all worth it. I, I really do enjoy that. That spring might be one of my favorite springs, to be honest with you, just because that grind and that competition level, nothing came easy. Nothing was easy about that spring, and that what makes it stand out the most. You know, when you when you struggle that hard through everything, that you know that's that means a lot to me. So I mean, then playing in the games and stuff and having shown all that work coming out on the field, it definitely was worth it. So you complete your first year and uh, get to all-conference uh, nod, uh, which had to be uh, exciting uh, for the first year, but you have improved since then. Um, what does it take to be a, a tight end in this system? It takes everything, really. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's everything in one, really. I mean, we need to know the receiving plays, we need to know the running plays, and it takes a little more time than most positions just because we meet a lot with the O-line, but we still have to get our receiving skills in, and then we go with the running backs every once in a while, getting our running skills in, and then even with film sessions, we meet, we meet you know, twice as much as the O-line does because we have to go over the pass plays, and, you know, it just, it adds on a little more having, you know, those, those two positions, and, you know, that... And that, you know, is what makes our tight ends kind of dynamic. You know, they can, we can run, we can catch, we can block. Is that fun for you? Yes, it, it <laughs> is. I actually remember my redshirt year, Bolte came up to me. He's like, you know, you're, you're going to be a receiving tight end. I was like, coach, I just want to block. <laughs> you know, that's all I knew. I, you know, I didn't want to have the burden of having to catch the ball. But, no, it's, it's worked out well, and I've enjoyed every second of it. Was there a moment, uh, you sort of mentioned it uh, that last spring, uh, or your first spring, uh, when you sort of got the feeling that, okay, I can I can be su a successful uh, college football player? Yeah, I remember coming in the first day for camp when I, in my red shirt year and just thinking, like, how am I going to make it through this? You know, these guys are huge. I mean, I was a decently big kid in high school, and then coming in where everybody's bigger than me. It's like, what did I get myself into? And I remember my co my coach was uh, Brian Stoffel, and he was a former All-American at, at Bemidji State. And I remember hearing that, and I was like, how is that possible, you know, an All-American? And I wasn't even All-State in high school in football. I was like, how could you become an All-American? But I, I would say after those after those first couple of days, once we started putting on pads and showing that I could block, and then with a couple catches those first couple of days I kind of I kind of knew I kind of fit in what's um what makes you successful I would have to say my desire just my my drive my work ethic I think that's the only thing that's ever got me anywhere to be honest with you um I mean I am gifted physically but as far as an athlete I really have worked for everything I've had I came in in high school and Kids made fun of me because I was so bad at football. I really, I really wasn't anything. I, and it's just been a struggle. I would say the most part, you know. Now it's, you know, it's. I've gotten to the point where I've I've worked so hard that it's starting to pay off, and that's really is the only reason why I'm good. Well, last off season, it it had to pay off uh, for you personally, getting some of the All American awards. Uh, you talk about being coached by one. Uh, when you became one, 
What did you did you have a, a sense of pride or what kind of emotions you have? <laughs> I actually remember exactly when I found out. I was driving home after the first semester. I was driving home and I got a text actually from one of my buddies who plays at Duluth. He's our free safety. And he texts me, he goes, Congratulations and I go, What are you talking about? You know, I had no idea. He's like, You're an all American and it just hit me. I mean that was that was everything that I strived for, and you know I accomplished it, which was amazing. And I actually remember when I got voted preseason All American. It was, it was we were during, we were at summer weights, and Coach Medbury comes in. He's like, "Congratulations!" I'm like, "For what?" And he goes, "You're preseason All American." I'm like, "You mean like preseason academic All American? Like it's academics, isn't it?" And he goes, "No, you're an actual preseason All American, like football player." And it's just, it's amazing. It's a it's an odd feeling. It's a sense of accomplishment. With that uh, type of recognition, obviously uh, you start getting a more looks, not only from other teams that uh, you know your opponents, um, but starting to get some attention uh, nationally. And uh, obviously, the next step for a football player is the NFL. Um, coming from D two, that's that story. You don't hear that as often. Uh, but this last. Uh, Preseason and, and into the season, you're getting some looks uh, from NFL scouts. What's that process like? It's uh, it's redundant. It's the same thing every single time, really. It's uh, it's different. It's weird. It's really weird to be who I am and thinking, you know, why are these guys here looking at me? Am I really that? Um, am I really who they think I am? You know, and it's um. To be honest with you, it's it's kind of the same thing every single time when they come in, but it's uh, it's good. You know, it, the best thing about it, I think, is just hearing what they have to say about my playing skills. You know, it's almost it's almost getting another coach involved, t- them telling me things that I need to work on. And it really, and really, when you know, the first couple of scouts came in the spring, they gave me a couple of good things to work on, and I got to focus on them a lot during the summer through training and everything, and it's definitely helped a lot. So um, when you're watching a, an NFL game now, and or even since you know spring and stuff, do you sort of key in a, on the on the tight ends a little bit more and just sort of see what their routes are like or what their assignments are like, just to see if hey I can do that. Yeah, I I would say I do. It's definitely it's definitely good to see people at that at that level and you know just watch film on them and see how how they move, you know how they make their plays. It definitely definitely helps everybody I think I think a lot of people do that and as far as me thinking about being putting put into that that setting it's overwhelming I couldn't I couldn't imagine I think the biggest crowd I've ever played for is probably five or six thousand they have you know 50 60 thousand people at every single game I just couldn't imagine it is this something that you want to you want to pursue I mean obviously you work hard and and you have that desire um, do you see yourself pursuing this this opportunity if it arises? Yes, I I definitely will. I think that's another step in my goals is I want to get to that point to be able to compete at that level, and uh, that's definitely something I, I set my mind on. Let's shift a little bit. Um, you are a student athlete. Student comes first, and you did mention uh, heading into BSU. You you had that academic uh, piece in mind as well. Um, not only uh, uh, all American on the field, but all American academically. Uh, what pushes you to to succeed in the classroom? I enjoy it. I I do. Um, I just take everything as a challenge, as almost a competition. I'm a very competitive person, and in the classroom, it's something. It's you know, it's just like on the field. I mean, I think. You know, competing in the classroom is just like competing in the on the field, and that's just something that I do take very seriously. It's important to me. It obviously is because, at being at a Division two level, you know, if this thing somehow works out where I could get paid to play football forever, you know, it's not gonna it's not gonna last forever. And I know that I need to get a career after this. That's what college is for, and I've had that in mind. And you know, I I enjoy the academics, the academic side of college and I, I've been fortunate enough to be good at it so it's it's definitely something I work hard for. I know your uh, focus is business but uh, do you have a, a sight on something that you may uh, want to do as a career? 
I do I do have a couple of couple of ideas. I've always kind of wanted to go into personal selling, talk to Federated Insurance a little bit. I've also thought about going into financial advising. Those are kind of the two areas I kind of want to be in, just for the sheer fact of competition. I'm, I'm kind of driven by competing, and those are very competitive areas. Well, Brian, thanks a lot for taking the time with us today, and uh, good luck the rest of the way. All right, thank you. BCBeavers.com here with head football coach Jeff Tesh here at Bemidji State. Uh, coach Tesh, talk a little bit about Brian Leonhart today and uh, what he's brought to this program. Uh, why don't you just start off uh, from the beginning and uh, what initially attracted you to Brian uh, during his high school uh, days? Well, really, um, it was a day where Coach Hogan came down to my office and said, There's a big looking, good, good looking kid walking down the hall. Uh, big kid said he's interested in football and was talking to Coach Hogan about track and uh, so I hunted him down, we met him and had an interest in football and track so we started recruiting him and uh, he was at that time really hoping that something would develop for a Division One track and field. It didn't work out for him so he said he would come to Bemidji to do both football and track and field so it was one of those deals where it was a good win-win situation for both sports. Um, and that's really how he ended up here. Uh, with that said, he's just been a, a joy to work with on the field and off. He's a 3-7 student in business. We, he's one of those kids that's always on time, never late, never missed weights. He's never been a problem off the field, just uh, as most of the good players are. You know, they take care of business on the field and off. So as a football player, He's been uh, extremely valuable as a blocker. His pass catching improves every year. He's a good leader. Uh, till the senior year, he'd been out there every every down, never missed a practice, never missed a play, and uh, that's always a sign of a good player durability and how long he can play. So those are just some of the things that he brings to the table. Uh, talking with him, uh, it sounds like he was sort of came in uh, during his redshirt fall year as a fullback and during the winter and spring was transitioning into the tight end uh, spot. What's, uh, what did you see, I guess, in, in his work ethic, maybe that first stretch of year, knowing that he could take on a responsibility like that? Well, that's interesting. I didn't remember that, that he was a fullback. I thought we recruited him to be a tight end, but if that's what he said, uh, one of us is missing something. But he, um, he came from a high school, uh, Spring Lake Park, that ran the beer offense known the coach for a while. They're, line, they're a very aggressive uh, blocking team. They run the football a lot. We were looking for that kind of a, of a tight end. Um, interesting, he had been a, more of an interior lineman in high school than uh, he had been a tight end. I think he was a tackle till his senior year. I think they threw about 10 times and six of them were to touchdowns to him his senior year. Um, we, just, we just thought he was a kid that maybe was a little bit of a sleeper as a tight end, but he just popped off the ball. We knew he was gonna be a big kid that uh, was a winner too. He was in the state playoffs in football. He was in the state championship in wrestling. He was in the state tournament in track and field. There's just all those intangibles that you couldn't have enough Brian Leonhardt's on your field. Um, talk a little bit uh, more about his skill set and how it's improved um, to be as successful and get that all-conference recognition from the from freshman year and then work his way up to an All-American this year? Well, the, the blocking part of things was always there. He needed to uh, improve on uh, catching the ball, running routes is something that he had never done. He wasn't a basketball player. They were not really a throwing team. So even an example of uh, after his junior year, a few of the scouts started looking at him and said he needs to run better routes, catch the ball with his hands more play bigger after he catches the ball, run over some guys. So those are some steps that he had really worked on in the spring and uh, made some giant, giant improvements. Um, so you're, you're mentioning that uh, he's getting some looks from scouts. Um, what's that process like you as a coach, uh, being able to you know have seen this player develop and get this type of recognition? Yeah, it's really nice for him because he's a hardworking kid. He... Um, I don't know if it was something that he set out to really have the aspirations or goals to do, more maybe more in track and field. Uh, the football has just evolved to, after his junior year, the word kind of got out that he was an exceptionally good blocker, you know, had 30-some catches, played well against the playoff teams last year in our league. So last spring, 
There's a few combines that represent six, eight different teams. Blesto and National Scouting, they came in and tested and worked them out, and he did real well there. Um, so this fall we've had, I want to say, it's close to 12 different teams have been in the office. Um, unfortunately, he's been hurt. They haven't been able to see him as much in practice as they wanted, but uh, they will come and watch you know, three or four of his game films from last year. They got to see his first game of the year, which even there he had a cast on his hand from a broken thumb. But um, they, they like a Division II player that's a good student, um, no problems on or off the field. They certainly are not going to take a Division II student if he's you know, at risk in any of those factors. And then they say a tight end position is a position where you can gamble on a small school kid. Um, and they also say that blocking tight ends are hard to find. You can take a power forward in basketball and he's athletic. There's Those guys are out there, but they still, the teams that want to run the football and the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Falcons and teams like that, they want to run blocking tight end. They think he has a good upside yet. Um, he He's not overly coached yet. Uh, we don't have a tight end coach. We don't have a per se a strength and conditioning coach here. They see an upside in his ability, so maybe he's a sleeper that gets in a camp and you know they can develop him a little bit more on a taxi squad, those types of comments we're hearing about. Um, last question, uh, he's voted a captain this year. Uh, what is it about his presence that uh, really makes his teammates uh, put him up on that pedestal? It, it's work ethic on the field, not productivity on the field. Um, they see that he's at class he doesn't miss class. He produces in the classroom a 3-7. He um, is well respected in the community. This summer, uh, the Sanford Health uh, Clinic wanted to start a, a fitness um, club and a train, train youth in the area how to run and lift and be uh, in better shape. And the number one person, they said, we can't make this go without Brian on the cover of the brochure kind of thing. And uh, just shows you how he's respected off the field too by the community and then he goes on the field and his work ethic he's always going hard and, and then he's producing too so kids see that and they want to be like Brian.